be back with you. Today I want to talk to you about a dynamics problem called escape velocity. Now we're fortunate to live in a time where there's a lot going on in the launch world. There's a lot of commercial launchers being developed right now and it looks like going into orbit and maybe beyond orbit is getting cheaper. Space is getting more accessible. It's getting easier to get there. So uh, it makes sense we want to know how to do some basic calculations in orbital mechanics. One of the most basic of these is escape velocity. So before we can calculate anything, we need to know what escape velocity is. When you've got a massive body like a planet, and I don't actually have a whole planet in my office, but I got this. This is going to be my planet. When you've got a planet like this, it has gravitational attraction. Things are drawn to it. I'm being drawn to this floor right now because of gravitational attraction from the Earth. Without it, I might float away. So here's our little model planet, and if we launch a rocket from this, it's, it's, the rocket is going to have to fight the gravitational attraction of the planet. Well, I need a rocket. I don't have a rocket. Um, I've got this. One of my students from a ways back gave me this. It's a 30 millimeter shell casing from an A-10. Don't you want one? Anyway, I, this is what I got, so I'll use it. Here's the rocket. Going to leave the Earth. Takes off. There's rocket thrust fighting the uh, attraction of the Earth. And as you get farther and farther away from the Earth, that attraction goes down and down and down. It goes down as 1 over r squared. Well, if you can go far enough away from the Earth, you're not going to come back. All right? So what we're trying to do with escape velocity is we're saying, well, how much p potential energy do you get if you start here and go to infinity, really, but arbitrarily far away? How much potential energy is that? And if you had that much potential energy when you were right here at the surface in the form of kinetic energy, that would be escape velocity. Another way to say it is that escape velocity, my balls, my planet's going to fall on the floor here. Hang on a second. There we go. Um, escape velocity is the velocity you need to reach in order to never come back to the Earth or whatever planet you're, you're in orbit around. And it turns out it's not that hard to calculate. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate a potential energy and then equate that to a kinetic energy. So here's what it looks like. Potential energy, we all know, we always see it written down as MGH, mass times the acceleration of gravity times the height above some reference line. Well, that's true as long as gravity doesn't change. Well, gravity does change if you get far enough away. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to write this with a different color because this pen is dying. Um, what we're really going to do is we're going to say our potential energy is mg as a function of r. And I'm going to use r because planets are round, uh, stars are round. When you're trying to figure out how far away you're getting from a planet or a star, typically you do it in terms of a radius. So I'm going to call Instead of h, I'm going to call it r, but it's just still just a distance. dr, okay, that's, that's how much potentially you, energy you get moving a small distance, with that being a small distance. And I'm going to integrate from wherever we're starting to infinity. That's a bad infinity. Let's see if I can do that better. Oh, that's a little better. Okay, what's r0? Well, that's where you're starting. If this were the Earth, R0 would be the radius of the Earth. How much kinetic, er yeah, kinetic energy do you have to have at the surface of the Earth to go away forever? That's escape velocity. So, this isn't too hard. What I need to do, though, is I need, I need an expression for acceleration of gravity. Well, the way we do that, we use one of Newton's laws, but maybe not the one you're thinking of. I'll write it down here. Okay. This is Newton's law of gravitation. This is a force. Okay. This is this big G. This is not the same as little g. Little g is the acceleration of gravity. Little g is 9.81. Big G is the universal gravitational constant. And it's 6.6741 times 10 to the minus 11. And the units are, I had to write them down because I never remember them, meters cubed over kilometers second, or kilograms second squared. We'll use that number in a minute here. Okay, so that's Newton's law of gravitation. It's the force is equal to some constant times the mass of the two objects in hand here. One I'm going to call the mass of the rocket, m sub r. The other one's the mass of the Earth. Well, the mass of the Earth is a really big number, but it's still just a number, and we know that number. 
and the other one is r squared. This is the distance between those two bodies. This is really what got orbital mechanics going when Newton was able to write that down. So, well, this, this still doesn't get me to little g. This doesn't get me to acceleration of gravity. Well, if f equals mg, then g must equal f over m, right? Well, if f divided by that number right there, I should get the acceleration of gravity. So here's what we get. Divide f by the mass of the rocket. squared, and I read the way I got that is that's F or the mass of the rocket. Okay, can I get, I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. So there we go. Now we have that expression to substitute in there. Well, let's go ahead and do it. So here's the potential energy. There's a much better uh, infinity sign. That's going to be the mass of the rocket. So I'm going to put that in there. I got rid of the mass of the rocket and now it shows up again. Well, that has to go away eventually. It will, because the mass of the rocket shows up in kinetic energy as well. Alright, so put the dr there. And what do you get? Well, let's let's write out this, let's let's simplify it one more time. M R G mass of the Earth. Those are all constants, right? Okay. Since those are all constants, those all come out in front of the uh, uh, integral sign, and I'm just integrating 1 over r squared. Well, that's not that hard. Can I get down this far? Ugh, it doesn't look like it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me erase here, and I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up again. Um, maybe I'll leave that so we can still have it. Okay, well, what I'm going to get, and this is all potential energy. So potential energy is going to equal mass of the rocket, g, mv, those are my constants. Well, the integral of 1 over r squared is minus 1 over r. So that's not too hard. Okay. And that goes from r0 to infinity. If you, if, if you are having trouble integrating 1 over r squared, the, the other thing you can do is replace that with something that's a little maybe easier to parse. If it helps, do it that way, okay? Because we have, we have laws of integration, or rules of integration that work on uh, uh, exponents like that. Just make the exponent minus 2, and you'll find out it's 1 over r, or minus 1 over r. All right, well, that's not so hard. So that turns out to be m r g m e. Okay, what's 1 over infinity? Well, 1 over infinity is 0. 1 over a an arbitrarily large number is arbitrarily small, so we'll call it zero. Okay, minus one over r zero minus. By the way, those two minuses, that's where the plus is going to come from. And so what you get is m r g m e over r zero. That's it. That's the potential energy you have to have at the surface of the Earth in order to escape from the Earth's gravitational pull forever. If you have this much energy, you're going to go away, you're never going to come back, at least not to Earth. Okay? So let's get rid of that. The last thing we've got to do, now that we have that, is make, that's potential energy, and this is kinetic energy. And again, I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. I don't generally know how much potential energy I have at the surface of the Earth, but if I can measure velocity, I know how much kinetic energy I've got. That's a lot easier to find. Notice how mr, the mass of the rocket, shows up in both terms, okay? So that means it's going to cancel out. And what that means physically, when we're, as we figure out velocity, it doesn't matter what the mass of the rocket is. It only matters what the velocity is. So it doesn't matter if you have a teeny tiny little rocket, doesn't matter if you have a great big rocket. You know, velocity is velocity. Once you've got uh, escape velocity, you're not coming back. So let's, one more step here. Okay, we're almost there, right? 
that's uh, velocity squared equals all that stuff. Well, let's just 86 that and there. That's the expression for escape velocity. Now, does, I've written it in terms of Earth, m sub e, mass of the Earth. Would that work for other planets? Sure. You want it to be the Sun? All right, make that the mass of the Sun and make that the radius. Well, if you're on the surface of the Sun, my guess is you've got bigger problems. But what do you suppose the escape velocity for Earth is with respect to the Sun? We're 93 million miles away. We could make that the mass of the Sun. We could make that 93 million miles or whatever that is in, me <coughs> in meters. And we could figure out how much velocity the Earth would have to have to escape from the Sun starting from our current orbit. Okay, so that's, that's how that works. So this, this is nice. I mean, I'm going to write this up here. and get rid of all this and let's start putting some numbers in. I remember from a long time ago reading, or well I learned it in aerospace engineering school I guess a long time ago, the uh, escape velocity uh, uh, about the earth from low orbit is about 25,000 miles an hour. So we should be able to put in the mass of the earth and the radius of the earth and get about 25,000 miles an hour. If we do we know we got the right answer. So. Let's see, G, this is a funny number, and this is a 1 times 10 to the minus 11, what did we decide that was? Uh, meters cubed over kilogram second squared, I think I got that right, I do, okay. And this is a, 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 phys a constant of nature, this is like uh, the speed of light or something, this, is, this just is, this is somehow woven into the time-space continuum. It's not, it's, it's not uh, the mass of a planet, it's not the, an acceleration of a body. This is just universal. As far as we can tell, it's the same everywhere. Okay, now this is the tough one. Here's the mass of the Earth. Well, how, you know, how do you find the mass of the Earth? Well, this being what it is, you, uh, times I'm doing this, you go on to Google, One of the few times you'll ever see a number bigger than Avogadro's number, okay? That's the mass of the Earth in kilograms, right? Now, when you go online and you start looking for the mass of the Earth, you sometimes see slightly different numbers. They may be differing by a percent or so. As near as I can tell, those are uh, due to the fact that our estimate of the mass of the Earth is changing. We're getting better. Uh, our knowledge of the mass of the Earth is getting better and we're able to refine our estimate of that number. If you look up something it turns out to be just a little bit different than that, don't sweat. That's that's probably what's going on. Okay. And let's see what this one's th this number you need a lot. You very seldom need G by itself or the mass of the earth by itself. You very often need the product of the two of them. So if you're gonna memorize something, this is probably the one to memorize. And of course I've had to change because the one I memorized was slightly different than our current estimate. 10 to the 14 kilometers. Okay, and again the units are, are kind of funny. So last thing I need is the radius of the Earth. Well, radius the Earth is not exactly a sphere. We've known that for a surprising amount of time. We've known the radius of well, we've known the radius of the Earth, but we've also known that it's not exactly round, but it's pretty close. So for, for our purposes, we can say the radius of the Earth is 6,378 kilometers, or 6,378,000 meters. Okay, we've known that for, for, for quite some time, too. All right, so if I got this right, if you plug all those numbers into the escape velocity expression, you get 1, 1, and let me make sure I get this right. 180. Here's a second. Well, is that right? Yeah, it turns out it is. But in, just in case you don't believe me, it turns out to be 25,008.99 miles an hour. So, just in case you're like me and you've you've learned these numbers in old dinosaur units, there you go. It's 25,000 miles an hour, just like we suspected. So, just to go over it one more time, escape velocity def is defined by the amount of energy you need to have, or your 
spaceship, your space probe, whatever it is, needs to have in order to leave the Earth and never come back. Okay? It'll never be drawn back by the Earth's gravitational pull. All right? So if we know that at much energy, okay, defined as the potential energy, set that equal to kinetic energy, energy in one form versus energy in another form, solve for velocity, that's escape velocity. So I hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.